Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Gold. In the last episode, we got to Fuchsia City and took out the Grass Gym Leader Erica. In this episode, we are going to the gym pretty much immediately. Um, so unfortunately, this episode is post-commentated because I lost the recording of the last episode. For some reason, my microphone became unplugged in the middle of the recording. Uh, but as you can see, the main gimmick in this uh, gym, well, as you can't see, actually, is that it has invisible walls, and all the gym trainers are dressed exactly like the gym leader. Um, so this can make it a little bit tricky to find the gym leader. Um, by the way, today is Tuesday, October 8th, when I'm recording this. It's probably going to go up on Saturday, so happy Saturday, everybody. Um, if it doesn't go up on Saturday, well, I hope you had a good Saturday, or have a good Saturday, because I can't remember. Um, so I have actually episodes posted on YouTube already uh, up to Friday. They're all scheduled to go, good to go, and uh, I have recorded up to part 45, and that is the point in which we finish all the Kanto gym leaders. Uh, I'm thinking that this is actually going to be a 48 part LP, um, just based on the way that it's it's gone, um, and sort of the way that I want to split everything up. Mind you, that, that could change a little bit. Uh, I do want to start Wind Waker on the 21st of October. Um, so, two weeks from yesterday, as of recording this. Probably much less than two weeks. Actually, like, eight days from when this episode is going up. Um, by the way, I did speed up or cut out all of the battles in this video. Uh, just because they're a little... There's so many in this video. And the record time when I recorded this came out to be 58 minutes. Um, so as you can see, it's like 21-ish now, I think, uh, something like that. Yeah, it's like just over 21 minutes, um, because I'm, I'm, like, watching along on Sony Vegas while I'm recording this audio track. Um, these sneaky people, I also love how there was, like, some dude that was dressed up as the gym leader, like, they just put on makeup and, like, gave, gave him a coconut bra or whatever and just, like, made him walk around the gym dressed like a woman. And it's, it's a little ridiculous. Um, and I don't I don't know if you can see it in the recording, uh, but obviously you can't see it right now. But where there are the invisible walls, there's four small little dots in each corner of the tiles that have an invisible wall in them. So that's how I can tell where I'm going in this gym. Uh, this is the most annoying gloom of all time, and you will see why. Uh, so Fly misses, and then I get put to sleep. And this sleep goes on for like five turns, and it's just, it's the worst thing ever. I really wish that I could have kept the commentary file before, because I I got like so pissed off at this freaking gloom. Like, this gloom, I'm going to kill your family. You're so annoying. And Fly misses again, and she puts me to sleep again. Like, what the hell? What are the freaking odds of that? Like, how does that even happen? I, I don't know. Um, but... It's okay, because this gym is actually pretty quick. I think I've done the gym in a total of, like, eight minutes, uh, just because I sped up most of the battles. This battle turned out to be, like, longer than the gym leader battle, actually. And the gym leader is is just the biggest joke of all time. Um, by the way, a, a notable thing about this is this is the only gym in Kanto where the gym leader changed, and that's because Koga got promoted, essentially, to being, uh, the gym lead- the- not the gym leader, the Elite Four member, uh, that was Master of Poison, he's the Poison Master! Oh, he's so masterful. Um, uh, but, uh, what, what was I saying? Yeah, this- this was the only gym leader that got changed, um, and this is the actual gym leader. I I totally spaced on who it was. Like I have I really had no idea who was the actual gym leader. So I was just walking around and talking to every single person. Uh, but this is gym leader Janine, uh, the fifth gym leader of Kanto, specializes in poison types Pokemon. First Pokemon is Crobat. Uh, knows the moves Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Supersonic, and Screech. Honestly, this was probably the hardest Pokemon that I had taking down in the in the gym. Um, and. I don't know if you could tell, but like level 36, that's the lowest gym leader poke lowest level gym leader Pokemon we've seen since we got to Kanto. Yes, Janine is like a new gym leader, so she has much lower level Pokemon than the rest of the gym leaders. Um, and as a result, she's a lot easier. I don't know if you're meant to take her down first, but like based on your levels, it sort of seems that way. Um, I think you're supposed to take down Lieutenant Surge first. 
and then go through Celadon and take out Erica, and then come down here, and then sort of wrap around and go to Saffron, and then Cerulean, Pewter City, uh, Cinnabar, and then Viridian. I'm pretty sure that's the order you're supposed to do it in. But I don't I don't really know. It's it's sort of like you could do it in any order you want. I think you have to do the Viridian gym last, but I'm not too sure. I know in the remakes you have to do them last, do it last, but I really don't know if you can do it first in this game or not. Or like you have to beat all the gyms in order or something like that, I don't know. But the the way it sort of goes through the process of like getting the Viridian gym leader to go to the gym, um it it seems like you can go in any order. Uh, by the way, uh, this is Weezing, level 36. She actually has two Weezings. Both of them know the moves Sludge Bomb, Smog, Toxic, and Explosion. Um, it actually has a pretty good moveset with uh, Sludge Bomb, to Toxic, and Explosion. Um, Smog isn't really that good of a move, but whatever. Um, she's going to send out Ariados next, or Ariados, or however the hell you say this Pokemon's name. I have no idea. Um, but it's level 33. Yeah, level 33. Lower than the 8th Johto Gym Leader. Um, and it knows the moves String Shot, Nightshade, Gra well, Giga Drain, and Scary Face. I totally read, like, Grass as the move. I was like, what the hell kind of a move is Grass? That's a horrible move. Um, but that thing is down in, like, one shot, just like Koga's area dose or whatever it was. Um, and now I think I saw she's sending out Weezing again. Yeah, she's sending out Weezing again. Um... Knows the exact same moves as the first one. Not a big deal to take down. Just one Psychic should do it. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, Fuchsia City was actually the former site of the Safari Zone. Um, I'm not going to go through this city. I'm, I'm going to, like, not really go through any of the cities. Because this is pretty much the last one we have to go through. This and Saffron, and that's it. Um, but, like, th this, there's nothing interesting here. Because they took out the Safari Zone in this game. Which I'm so glad that they did. Because the Safari Zone is the worst thing ever. Um, her last Pokemon is Venomoth, level 39. Yeah, that's her highest level. Lower than Claire's highest Pokemon. Uh, knows Toxic, Psychic, Foresight, and Supersonic. Only really knows one Poison move, and it can't even do any damage. Just like her Ariados and her Crobat don't know any Poison moves. Um, which is ridiculous, because she's supposed to be Poison-type. And there's lots of Poison-type Pokemon in this game. Uh, but we've taken down Janine. And we kicked her ass and because of it we get the soul badge um now i heard that there's a grammatical error when she gives you the soul badge uh which is a little bit funny I i'm not too sure if there actually is it's something about special gifts and toxic which is actually a really good tm uh, i'm gonna teach this to bats i got rid of swift uh, i did that because swift isn't that great of a move i'd rather have bite just to take down like ghost types and uh Psychic types, which is always nice, um, but uh, Toxic is a really good move because it poisons your opponent, but it um, it starts at 1 16th HP, and the damage steadily increases uh, over time that it does, uh, just, just at the end of any turn. It's just like poison, except it does more damage uh, in the long run. In the short run, if they only get poison for one turn, it actually does less, but whatever. Um, so, so the Safari Zone in this game uh, is pretty much the worst thing that was ever created. And uh, basically what it is, is you can go into um, the Safari Zone, you buy time, you buy like 500 or 600 steps, and you can throw bait at Pokemon. This girl is explaining that like her dad was the Safari Zone war Warden, and uh, basically they, they shut it down because he just wanted to stop running it, which is good. Um, but... What you would do is you would go in there and you couldn't take any Pokemon in to damage the Pokemon that you're fighting. You couldn't, like, use any balls other than Safari Balls, which were the equivalent of Great Balls. You only had Bait, which would draw the Pokemon closer and keep them from running away. Or you had Rocks, which would make your Pokemon more likely to run away, but it would make it more likely to be caught. And it was, it was all around just horribly done. It's been horribly done in every game. They've got to think of a better way to do it eventually. Hopefully it's not an X and Y, because I really don't know if it is. And I'm really excited for that game, because it comes out on Saturday and I want to play it. Oh my god, it's so awesome. Uh, but there are so many trainers in this route. Uh, and by the way, uh, when that girl was talking about the Safari Zone Warden earlier, um, you need that 
like, you need to go into the Safari Zone in the original games to get two HMs. Surf, which you get in the Safari Zone, and Strength, which you exchange for something you find in the Safari Zone, like, right at the end of it. So you have to get to the end of the Safari Zone, and it's just a big waste of time, and it's horrible, and stuff like that. And this- this woman wants to battle. <sighs> oh, Jesus. I was really hoping I wouldn't sneeze, because that's gonna, like, be weird with the sinking of the commentary. I'd probably just cut it out and, like, leave the, the amount of time in. And I'd probably get a sneeze again here. <sighs> yep. <sighs> oh, man, that really sucks. Oh, whatever. Um... So, as I explained in, like, a later episode, which I'm coming to you from the future, ahead of the episodes that I recorded yesterday, which I finished all the Kanto Gym Leaders, um, I managed to, like, only get allergies when I'm recording for some reason. I think it might be the couch that I'm sitting on, or it might be, like, the fact that I'm talking and I'm breathing in so much because I'm talking, stuff like that, I don't know. But it's probably something with the dust. Uh, but, you know what's weird, is I sit here and I play, like, Grand Theft Auto on my PS3, and, uh, yes, I have it for PS3, I don't have a 360, whatever, um, but, like, I don't get allergies then, but I get allergies now. Um, honestly, funny enough, a l little weird thing that I looked up, because I said this in the original commentary, but I, I, it wasn't actually true, uh, Cliff Fairy apparently is not getting changed to Fairy type, um, now, whether or not this is true, I'm not too sure, but I've seen no proof that it, that it is getting changed into fairy type, um, which, which is kind of funny because it has fairy in the name. It's a little ridiculous, but, but whatever. Um, this was the longest route basically ever. Um, so this goes all the way up to Lavender Town. Um, so it goes all the way up to basically as north as Celadon, and it goes all the way right uh, further than Saffron City. We're probably at about equivalent to Saffron City right now. Um, but I swear to God, like, if you look at a map, you go further south going this way than you do on Cycling Road. I swear to God. It's like, <laughs> there's no way you go the same amount of distance going both roads. Because this one is way, way longer. Um, so a little annoying thing here is that I actually put Super Bitch in the PC. Stupid me for putting Super Bitch in the PC, like that one ep like the last episode where I, like, put him away and then I had to go get him back like 30 seconds later, and that was really annoying. Um, but it's, it's okay because we come up here and we get a PP up, which is awesome and I love it, and it's so fantastic because I really need more power points for Surf on, um, on Tentacruel because like, that, that is the one move that I seem to find running out of power points more so than anything else. So I'm gonna, like, increase the power points for that one for sure. Uh, this woman here wants to trade a Chansey for an Aerodactyl. Um, like, your Chansey for her Aerodactyl. As far as I know, that's the only way to get a fossil Pokemon in these games besides trading it from the originals. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Chansey you have to trade from the originals. I'm not too sure if you can actually find it anywhere, but if, if you can... I really don't know, because uh, I know you could find Chansey in the Safari Zone in uh, the first games, which is part of the reason why it was so horrible. Um, here I'm looking for like a way to avoid all these trainers, because I it got to a point, like right here I was probably about 35 minutes into the recording, just because like those first battles that I cut out and like fast forwarded through, that took like 20 minutes. Um, and there was one guy there that just, he the battle literally took like 12 minutes. And I said absolutely nothing interesting, and it was just like the worst battle ever, so I just completely cut it out. Um, but, I, I was pretty much looking for a way to avoid all the trainers at this point, because, like, it, it had already been a super long episode anyways, and like, all of these episodes that I've been recording in Kanto have been like, 30 to 40 minutes in total before I make cuts, and then they turn out to be just under 30. Um, there was one where I actually cut out like, Jesus Christ, how much was it? Uh, like, 20 minutes of video, which is a little ridiculous, I know. Um, but whatever. Uh, I'm really wishing I could hear the game audio right now, because I have to mute it, or else, like, the audio will come out through my computer onto the the commentary file, and it'll echo, and it'll sound really weird. I don't know. Um, but I actually have it muted right now, because I have my laptop on my lap. Usually when I'm recording, 
like my computer's muted anyways because like the the sound comes out of my TV and then about a second later it comes out of my uh, my laptop and then it makes me like nauseous because there's like a little sound differential between like what I actually do and what what I do like what happens with the sound in like one of the sound files but the other one is fine it's a little weird I don't know um, I'm actually listen wishing that I could listen to music right now I actually went to HMV yesterday and I picked up so many freaking albums I don't know if you know what HMV is but it's like a music store um, I don't know if that's in the US or anything like that I think it might be Canada only I'm not really too sure um, but I picked up uh, means everything to nothing by Manchester Orchestra that was probably the most like surprisingly good album that I picked up which was amazing like if you haven't heard that album you need to go out and listen to it because it's so freaking awesome I'm not even kidding you like it oh it's it's just so good I, I can't even put it into words because I'm, I, I'm just like groping the air right now because I'm just trying to grasp for like something to say about it that's that pulls in the raw energy of how great it is um, I also picked up the new Matthew Good album Arrows of Desire that one's really good too um, I don't know how I had time to listen to all this music yesterday. I guess I was listening to it while I was, like, rendering and editing videos, because that's pretty much all I did yesterday. Um, all I did was, like, go to school, go to two classes, and then hand in my assignment, and then I was done for the day. Because it's an off week, and I, I have nothing this week. Um, but that's that's all I did was, like, listen to music and render videos, basically. So I, I got, like, five videos done yesterday or something like that, which was awesome. That's really, really great, and, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, but what else did I get? I also got, um, Nine Inch Nails Year Zero. That is an awesome album. That, like, I listened to that album probably three times yesterday. That's gotta be one of my favorite albums of all time now. Like, I'm not even kidding, it's so good. Um, if you like sort of like electronica-ish music, ooh, Ralph Fisher is calling, KevDog, howdy, it's me, Ralph, is it nice I want a battle, it's not gonna be a repeat of the last time we meet, you're over 32. I've said it before and I'll say it again, and I know I'll say it again, because I know what I've already said in the future. I will go and battle all of the people that want to rebattle after I go and beat all the gym leaders in Kanto. And this is a promise. This is th this is what's going to happen in episode 46. I'm just going to say that right now. I'm giving you an episode number. So, if you want to watch all the rebattles, you go to that episode and you will see them because these trainers will probably have like level 14 Pokémon that I will rebattle because we all know that one battle with what was it Picnic or Liz, I think it was, um that I rebattled her, and uh, she had like super low-level Pokemon. Now, uh, this is sort of a split in the path. Uh, if we go left here, uh, we actually go to Vermilion City, uh, but it's like a little route before you go to Vermilion, um, and then you go to Vermilion. Uh, I'm trying to show it on the map here. It's a little awkward because the, the map is so hard to jump around. Um, but if you go up, you actually go to Lavender Town, and basically what I'm showing on this on this route right here with the docks and stuff is I'm basically showing everything but one screen. Um, so there's like a trainer at the very top of this that I just didn't feel like battling. So I, I skipped past it and I just went back down. Um, so like, it's right up here. Uh, if you go one screen up, like literally it's docks and then you get to Lavender Town. Uh, that's, that's all that's there. Um, but it's really not even worth going through because you have to battle that guy and there's no point in going back up to Lavender Town at this point. Uh, but, if you go to the left here, you get a, a required trainer battle, which is always awesome. Uh, but, you get back to Vermilion City after going through this route. Um, this is sort of like... It shows how there's multiple ways to get to Fuchsia City. There's re Realistically, there's three towns that you can go to Fuchsia City from. Vermilion, Lavender, and, uh, and Celadon. Sorry, Celadon is probably the quickest way to go. Uh, but, I always prefer going through Lavender Town just because you battle so many freaking trainers on your way there. Also, that little crossroads and that split in the path that we just went in, um, there was a Snorlax blocking the end of that path, so you couldn't go 
from Vermilion City to Fuchsia City before you got the polka flute. Uh, this was just sort of a way to make sure that you went through Rock Tunnel, went to Lavender Town, and then went to Celadon, and then went back to Lavender Town and got the poke flute, so you could go down to Fuchsia City, and it was a little annoying, but whatever. Um, and this was sort of more so of a way that, like, if you didn't pick up the bike, um, it, it sort of helped you out. My screensaver just went on and it scared the crap out of me because I thought my computer died, which would have really sucked. Um, and this guy is just another one of those dot 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 douches that just says nothing but dot dot dot. Um, but this road, route is really short. I think there's only four trainers on it, but I'm not too sure. In the originals, there were a lot of trainers on, on this route. There were probably like nine. And this was sort of a way to train up before you went to the third gym. That's always what I used it as. I was actually went back to uh, through Diglett's cave and caught a Diglett and then used it on the fourth gym, which is actually really helpful. It's like if you're stuck on that gym in the original games, that's pretty much what you're supposed to do uh, because that was a hard gym. You didn't really have anything to deal with it. Uh, but that's all the time we have for this episode. So uh, in the next episode of Pokemon Gold, we will go through up to Saffron City and I will rebattle all the trainers off screen. So I will see you guys then. Goodbye, and have a wonderful tomorrow.